This video is sponsored by EssentialDeveloper.com by Kayo and Mike. They're offering a free course for iOS developers who want to master scalable architectural patterns and become one of the most wanted developers in the world. It's a three-day crash course, 100% online, where you'll take the first steps to work on large iOS projects, have a bigger impact, and consequently increase your salary. Many of Kayo and Mike's students at Essential Developer get jobs at large companies worldwide. During this free crash course, you can ask questions directly to Kayo and Mike, and as a bonus, you'll also have access to live mentoring sessions. The course is online, so you can follow the lessons from the comfort of your home. It's 100% free, so take advantage of this opportunity. If you want to become a real senior developer, this course can make all the difference in your career. The course is available for a short period of time, so visit EssentialDeveloper.com slash to secure your free spot now. Today, we're going to be talking about the screen factory design pattern in Swift. It's a common architectural pattern. It's a lot simpler than how it sounds. Before jumping into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, and let's dive in. So we're going to be working with Xcode, of course. Let's create a brand new project. We'll stick with the app template here, and I'll create give this project a name of factory pattern and we can actually select Swift or Swift UI it doesn't really matter since we're not going to be dealing with the UI I'll stick with storyboard aka uh, UI kit I should say we'll save this on our desktop and before jumping into things let's just go ahead and full screen our uh, Xcode window here so I'll jump into the view controller and we'll start talking about what the heck a screen factory even is. Maybe you've never heard of it. So the notion of design patterns as a conceptual piece is you have a way to semantically separate pieces of code into ways that make logical sense. It's easier to discover that code and it's easier, frankly, for a software developer to understand and work with it. One of those such patterns is the screen factory or a object that is responsible for uh, creating particular screens. Now, I will say that the factory pattern can be further extrapolated to just being a generic factory pattern, not necessarily a screen factory, but the screen factory notion is easier to understand, hence I'm gonna show an example with that. So traditionally, when we have a view controller, and we wanna to go to another screen, we can basically create it and just present it. So as an example to start, we'll set a background color here to red. And what I'll go ahead and do is we're gonna say, uh, perhaps after maybe, uh, let's see, async after, let's say now plus two seconds, we want to go and show another controller. So traditionally what you would do is, let's say I wanna create a settings controller. We would just instantiate it. I'll just use the base class. And you would say self.present, we're gonna pass in that controller, we'll say present it with an animation, and perhaps I will also go and say the background color of this guy will be yellow. So let's build and run into a simulator. Should pop up hopefully momentarily. Looks like it popped up right here. And what we should see is initially we'll have that red controller and in two seconds, once our simulator decides to load, we'll see the yellow screen, AKA view controller get presented. So uh, if your application is taking forever like mine, just hit that home button and be slightly patient with it. Sometimes these simulators uh, are a little slow and if it takes super long like mine is, just stop and run it again. Uh, the equivalent of plugging it in and unplugging it. And if it takes even super duper longer, what you can do is hit device and erase all contents and that'll actually reset your simulator. And I purposely like to leave these little tidbits of me you know, debugging uh, live and in action in the video because I find it to be incredibly helpful for people that are learning and inevitably hitting these problems along the way. So our simulator is resetting here. It looks like there it is. Let's build and run this again. And there is our app. So we get this red view controller and in two seconds we get this yellow one presented. One thing you'll notice is that we explicitly in this, uh, in this delay block, we instantiated it. Now this can be incredibly verbose. If you can imagine a larger application where you need to pass in a variety of arguments to this and let's say you have some configuration, right? So the concept of a factory is you have a single place that's responsible for creating 
object and returning it to you. So let's actually create that screen factory and we'll see an example. So I'll create here a Swift file and I'm going to call it a screen factory. And the screen factory will create and it is going to be a file class called screen factory. And the screen factory is going to have a protocol up here. So we'll say screen factory protocol that this screen factory class will conform to. And essentially what we'll do is this screen factory is responsible for creating all of our screens, AKA view controllers, feel free to rename it as you'd like and returning it to our uh, caller, right? So let's say we want a function in here, create settings screen, and we'll say background color. Let's say we want to create it inside of here and this is going to return a UI view controller. Now, if we try to build our project, we're going to get yelled at because we need our screen factory down here to conform to this. And you might be wondering, well, why did we even bother adding a protocol, right? Why not just take this function in here? And the reason for that is when you add these protocols, you further decouple this concrete object. In other words, it makes it easier to pass around as well as write unit tests for. So now what I will do is back inside our view controller, I'm going to cut all of the code that we had added to create that setting screen. And we'll basically just paste it into this create settings VC. And instead of presenting it, we're just going to return it here. The other thing you'll notice is we are going to use this background color argument that's passed in as a parameter here uh, for the background color of this particular view controller we're creating. And of course, we're returning it down here so that error does go away. So awesome. Let's jump back uh, into our view controller after we add a initializer here and let's create our screen factory. So here we'll say a private let's, let's just call it factory and this will be a screen factory. Now, essentially what I will do here is say that our new view controller that we want to get the settings is factory and it only has one function as of now and we'll pass in system pink perhaps. So I'll build and run and it looks like it is indeed yelling at me because factory is in the global space and we're in a closure here. So we'll say self dot to refer to it. And we'll get the exact same functionality with the difference being now that we have consolidated that creation of the settings controller into a single place. So the beauty of that is once we uh, want to use this again in another place in our app, we don't need to assign that color. We've consolidated that logic into our factory function here. So you can imagine as an app scales and gets larger and larger, you might have more and more complex ways to configure things. It doesn't only have to be screens. This could be a API request factory. It could be a view factory. It could be a manager factory. Um, there's, you know, even crazier examples out there where a factory will return a factory. So a factory factory. Um, and it gets pretty wild. So the benefit of this, once again, conceptually is you're co-locating all of your code. You're abstracting all configuration into a single spot. In this case, we're just using background color as the only kind of dynamic uh, configurable aspect here. And we're returning the base class. Now you can return, uh, you know, even more specific things in here. So it doesn't have to be the vanilla UI view controller. If we had a subclass, we would return maybe a settings view controller, but I digress. Those are all semantics. So that is a factory pattern in a nutshell. The very last thing I'll mention before wrapping up this brief video is it's important to keep in mind that the screen factory or any factory for that matter should not be in the business of persisting any state. In other words, the reason it's actually called a factory is it should literally just be like in your mind conceptually like a factory. So I tell the factory, hey, build this thing for me and it spits it out. There should not be anything being stored on here. We should not be holding on to data, um, so on and so forth. And the reason that I explicitly called that out is sometimes people wonder, well, hey, do we need to instantiate this every single place? Like, why can't we just do screen factory dot shared and use it as a singleton? 
Um, the first reason is, you know, singletons generally are not the greatest design pattern for a plethora of reasons. And secondly, you can just inject this screen factory down to other objects as you see fit. So that is all I've got in this video. Now, the great thing about screen factories is that it's one of many architectural patterns. And, you know, if you're interested in becoming uh, a senior developer to work on large scale iOS projects. This video is in fact sponsored by Essential Developer who are running a three day completely free online course that you can take advantage of linked down below. So shout out to Essential Developer by Kayo and Mike. Take a look when you get a chance to limited time session. So don't, uh, don't sleep on it. Appreciate y'all watching. Drop a comment if you've got any questions down below. Like the video before clicking away. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one.